In this video, we'll learn about MOSFET current voltage characteristics. Shown here is a picture of an NMOS transistor, and down here are three different schematic symbols that may be used to represent it. They may all be used interchangeably. They're just different schematic representations of the same device. In all cases, G is the gate, D is the drain, S is the source, B is the body. As with any good schematic symbol, its picture gives us a clue as to the device's operation. You'll notice all three symbols represent the gate with a line separated by some white space between a second line. This line here that connects the drain and source represents the channel region, and the line to the left here obviously represents the gate. They're separated by white space to remind us that the gate and channel region are separated by an insulator. So current can't, DC current anyway, can't flow into the gate. In this symbol on the left, the arrowhead reminds us that when the channel region is inverted, we've got an n-type channel and a p-type body. So there exists a PN junction between the body and the channel region. So that arrow sort of looks like a diode there between the body and the channel region. The second symbol over here looks a little different. It has an arrow pointing out of the source to remind us that in its normal operation, the drain will have a higher voltage than the source. And so a drain current will flow into the drain and out the source. Finally, in the third symbol on the right, we only see three terminals. That's because in many applications, the body will either be connected to the source or if not, the body may be simply tied to the lowest voltage present anywhere in the circuit in order to ensure that the body to drain and source regions never become forward conducting. In either case, the body terminal voltage is not moving and it's no longer relevant to the main operation of the transistor. So we often simplify schematics by using this simple on, symbol on the right and allows us to basically not show all the body connections for all the transistors. So just a reminder that we've identified three regions of operation for the MOSFET. When VGS is less than the threshold voltage, we're in cutoff. When VGS exceeds the threshold voltage, and VDS is below the overdrive voltage, Then we're in triode. And finally, with VGS exceeding the threshold voltage and VDS exceeding the overdrive voltage, then we're in saturation. In cutoff, no current flows. In triode, the drain current is predicted by this expression here. It depends on both the overdrive voltage and VDS. And in saturation, the drain current becomes a weak function of VDS. And we see this classic so-called square law. Because the drain current is proportional to the square of the overdrive voltage. This picture on the bottom left can help us relate the operating mode of the transistor to its schematic representation. So if the gate is turned on and biased with a gate source voltage equal to the threshold voltage plus an overdrive voltage, then we can think of its voltage as being separate, you know, identified by the separation between these two lines. Then we know that it'll either be in saturation or triode depending on the drain source voltage. If the drain source voltage is above the overdrive voltage, then we're in saturation. Note that uh, it doesn't have to be above the gate voltage. It only has to be above the overdrive. If the drain voltage drops 
below the overdrive voltage, then we enter triode. This table is a nice summary of the regions of operation of the enhancement NMOS transistor. Remember our experiment here where we bias the gate source voltage with a constant VGS and we sweep the drain source voltage. Remember that for very small drain source voltages, the plot of drain current versus drain source voltage is very close to linear because it's behaving practically like a resistance RDS, whose value is determined by this expression. And that situation persists until VDS starts approaching the overdrive voltage, at which time a quadratic relationship takes hold, captured by this expression here. And then finally, we enter saturation, the transition being VDS sat, which is approximately equal to the overdrive voltage itself. From then on, we have a drain current that's predicted by the classic square law. We can extend this experiment to think about the case where we're sweeping both VGS and VDS. So remember that when VGS is below the threshold voltage, we're in cutoff, so zero drain current flows regardless of VDS. As soon as VD VGS exceeds the threshold voltage, it turns on and we start seeing drain current flowing for non-zero VDS. The transition from triode to saturation happens at the point where VDS equals the overdrive voltage corresponding to that particular value of VGS. So note that the transition voltage shifts to the right for each new curve because each curve represents an increase in VGS and hence an increase in overdrive voltage. So the transition point is uh, it has a current given by the current in saturation, the square law expression, one half k n prime w over l v o v squared. So that means that the transition point is a quadratic function of VDS, since at the transition point v o v equals VDS. So you have this quadratic shaped region curve to the left of which we're in triode and to the right of which we're in saturation. This is a useful picture to keep in mind. But always remember with this plot that you're looking at the drain current on the y-axis versus VDS on the x-axis. And for each particular trace on this plot, VGS is being held constant the gate source voltage. It'll also sometimes be useful to think about the behavior of drain current versus gate source voltage. So to make this plot, let's imagine that VDS is large. Large enough that as we're sweeping VGS, the transistor remains in saturation. That is, even as we sweep VGS all the way up to its maximum value, VDS is greater than VOV. So if we do that, then when we do this experiment and create this plot, what we're really plotting is our square law expression. which kicks in, remember, only beyond the point where VGS is greater than VTN. Below this point, we've simply got a transistor that's in cutoff with zero drain current. This expression no longer ho holds to the left of the point VGS equals VTN, otherwise we would start to see it curve back up again. That's clearly not correct and we're in cutoff. Equivalently, we can imagine this plot on the VOV axis. In that case, we simply shift the plot so that the threshold voltage corresponds to VOV equal zero. And then we'd have a plot of the square law 
using this expression. Now, MOS transistors can be engineered to have a variety of threshold voltages, all the way from a few volts, all the way down to near zero. And in fact, even negative threshold voltages are possible. Such devices are no longer enhancement mode devices, but they do exist. Essentially, even for zero VGS, there's an inverted channel. We don't spend much time focusing on those devices in this course. So if we're sure that the transistor voltages are satisfying the conditions required for it to be in saturation, that is specifically that VGS is greater than the threshold voltage and VDS is greater than the overdrive voltage, then we can simply replace it with this equivalent square law model. In this model, you'll notice that the gate is not connected to anything. And that's because physically, the gate is insulated from the rest of the transistor by the oxide layer. So no DC current can flow into the gate. Um, the drain current in this expression is determined by the square law. So this is a voltage dependent current source here, but it's not a linear one, which can complicate analysis. You'll notice in this model, the body terminal has been neglected because it's been assumed that it's connected to an appropriate voltage to ensure that its junctions all remain reverse biased and no current flows into it. So we can neglect it in our analysis. So in saturation, you see that the current between drain and source depends entirely on the voltage between gate and source. And there's virtually no dependence on the drain source voltage. So we've achieved our objective of realizing a transistor, a trans resistor, that is one for which the current through two terminals depends on the voltage across two other terminals. This situation arises only in saturation for the transistor. Remember that in triode, the current that's flowing all also depends on the drain source voltage. 